Welcome to the Ruby Hour, a podcast produced by our company, Ruby Riot Creatives. We specialize in video production and content marketing, and we're based in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Shelby Ring. And I'm Madeline Rager. This podcast is devoted to interviewing extraordinary people doing extraordinary things and nuggets of wisdom that they've learned along their journey. Also, just want to give you a heads up, uh, we have potty mouths and we're talking about <laughs> inappropriate things. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in uh, today for another session of the Ruby Hour, where we feature extraordinary people doing extraordinary things and dive into the journey of where they have been along the way and what got them to this moment. So I have the legendary Shannon Wooten of Palmetto Gun Dogs old friend uh she has been someone that we have uh filmed and she has photographed we've uh worked alongside one another we have talked shop together we've talked some smack we've done some dumb stuff done some cool stuff uh filmed the uh some field trials aka dog olympics together and uh we just uh like to force cuddle each other in our spare time and uh, have a good time so um so she's based out of camden south carolina and I dare say, I mean, I can't even start to tell you what I've learned from this woman and from the lessons that I've recognized in my own life from the way I have related with dogs in my life. Um, So we're going to have an unusual but fascinating conversation around what are the parallels that you might not even realize you're doing with what you tolerate with your dog, um, other animals, just it's... Yeah, I'm pumped to have this conversation. Shannon, thank you so much for taking your time from your busy schedule to come and be sitting here with us in our office. Thank you for being here. You are so welcome. And um, so tell me, what? Uh, how the heck did you get into working with dogs? Well, I bought my first Labrador in 93. Yeah. And so then two and a half for most of that year. Okay, yeah. I gotta go now. Um, I bought her and I had to figure out a way that I could train her because she was a really smart dog. Mm. Blockbuster had like, I don't know, three videos. So I would rent them and then I would go back because you know, you you only had a certain amount of time in that era, uh, the black and white TV era that you could rent. the video so Uh you'd have to go back in and recheck it out but nobody else was after them so it was just me so i would go in and check them out on the reg yeah yep and all i had under my blockbuster account was dog training videos really so that that's where it all started okay and then um that was in 93 and 95 i met alan okay and i thought it was a good idea to take her duck hunting okay um raining probably 15 degrees it was freezing so we load up the boat take her i shoot a bird she jumps out of the boat gets up to it and turns around and comes back i was devastated didn't pick it up i was like man what the heck yeah didn't pick it up so she'd never seen a duck i'd only taken her dove hunting never taken her duck hunting Mm. And so she didn't know what it was and wouldn't pick it up. So then I just worked with her on land a little bit, and then she picked it up. And then I was like, you know what? There's got to be a way, like, you know, to teach them before you just get them out there. Yeah. You know, yeah. just because she doesn't know what it is. Yeah. So then Alan's always trained. He, from the time he was probably 12, he's worked with, you know, he worked with Bruce Jackson. Okay. Um, I don't know who that is. Phenomenal dog trainer all right og dog trainer i mean the man okay the, yeah Dang. um but he worked with bruce and then he always had dogs like he'd have his own personal dog or a friend's dog in for training and then he would go um he's always going on trips you know canada arkansas that man is always Gone. going somewhere know, fun heck? yeah <laughs> And I mean, I get to come to Charleston. I'm like, this is freaking vacation, man. Yeah. Should we go eat dinner after this? Yep. <laughs> Let's do it. Come on. Right down um, the road. 
But then, you know, we got married, kids, Alan in 07, maybe, Mm -hmm. went to train bomb dogs. Okay. So he was gone all during the week training in Virginia. And I what was, are bomb dogs for those of us that don't know what that so is? So the dogs that he trained were trained to pick up um, scent on IEDs and explosives. Oh, my gosh. So what? it was pretty intense. Oh, my gosh. So he trained them on, on actual odor. Um, wow. Yeah. And that's what he did. And then when that contract ended... Uh, <laughs> he came home mm-hmm. and he decided he was going to open up his own kennel and I was like absolutely let's do it okay so that's what, what? we did how did I not know that Alan trained bomb dogs that's like know. the most epic thing ever mm-hmm. okay alright yeah, that's pretty cool what alright and so then you guys opened up did you call it Palmetto Gun Dogs from the beginning or it was it was just like well we tried to come up with a name and then one day just going down the road i was like we could be palmetto gun dog yeah and then it just was like okay that's it it's perfect i love it and just Um, went with it okay and so like for people that are like listening and you know maybe they have like household dogs or they're not big into the hunting scene um you know my journey with it was like you know i did not grow up in the um like hunting dog culture you know that was something that i was introduced to later on in my life from a previous relationship and you know i just remember it was like culture shock where i wanted any dog i ever saw i would be like oh my gosh hey oh how are you do you love me are are we friends do you accept me like oh my gosh this is the best thing like Mm -hmm. it was like all that energy Mm -hmm. and i grew up with dogs like that they Mm -hmm. jump on you all this mess and then i met you know the two dogs that i um you know was close to and that you know i treated them as my own pups um and to go into recognizing like oh wait like it's not appropriate to like have a dog jump on a stranger the moment they meet them or you and being like oh my gosh yes jump on me and then we get mad at the dog Mm -hmm. when it jumps on our grandmother but the dog doesn't know any different because we set that pace and so getting into the hunting dog culture where these dogs are trained with a purpose they have so much passion and they have an outlet and i never knew any of that i never knew the concept of giving a dog a job a role where they can thrive and so i remember one of the first the first time that i ever came and wanted to catch some time with you i was like oh my dog like listen he's like disrespectful he does not respect women like straight up i mean like you might as well think he was like an ex-boyfriend or something i'm like listen he doesn't respect women um he doesn't like he can walk with my partner at the time and he listens well he heals he's like doing all the commands all the things he's you know quote supposed to do and then i get him uh you know on a leash and i'm trying to walk alongside him and he is getting in front of me he's doing his own thing he's disregarding me and i remember bitching to you being like this dog I mean he is out of line and I I can't do anything about it and I remember you had me walk with Huck on the leash and Huck is a very disclaimer Huck is a very pleasant sweet dog he's very nice he's golden and uh, so we start walking and he's walking on my feet he's getting in front of me and uh, you know and you were like like what was some of the moments like what were some things that you would ask me well first off what dogs will teach you about yourself can be a little overwhelming it's like going to therapy it really trying to work with you with a dog it's Mm -hmm. it's like you got to come in i felt very embarrassed at first because you were like calling me out on my shit (laughs) well i mean it is what it is yeah you know but you know was i there at one point absolutely you just weren't there to see me yeah you know but what but what a dog will teach you about yourself will make you step back because it's it's kind of like we talked about it it goes in other areas of your life if people are pushing you around and walking all over you i mean it's like i mean i can tell 
by the way your dog responds to you what your everyday life is like outside yeah it's obvious yeah you know because i'm just like mm, that poor girl get walks all over all the time uh-huh. you know like the jumping yeah. and and just disrespect you're not going to allow some crazy man to come up to you in a bar yeah and jump on you yeah. and lick you in the face yeah and knock you down i mean how cute is he no no, no i'm not yeah no you're not going to do it because it's just respect yeah it's it's is space dogs have it and we have it yeah and then we let them jump on us and come into our space and we don't know how to correct it we don't want to hurt their feelings and we don't Mm want to hurt them and we're like oh my god and then i feel like some people are just like they invite that dog into the space and then they don't it's like they they want your approval that they like your dog does that make any sense wait say that again they want your approval Mm -hmm. that by liking your dog okay so for me and my dogs Mm -hmm. i don't care Oh, okay you follow me so if my friend has a dog and it's jumping on me right and and you allow it it's like you want her approval and you don't want to hurt the dog's feelings and yeah you know some people i feel like are doing it just so that people look at them and go oh how sweet right and i'm like i don't i don't see that Mm -hmm. because if it's my dog i honestly don't care if my dog ever looks at you Mm -hmm. because it's my dog that Mm -hmm. dog is there solely for me yeah it has nothing to do with you and it is it's Mm -hmm. like that's the thing i mean we have so many conversations around here around like the social media culture Mm -hmm. and like oh i'm doing it for the likes i'm doing it for the external Mm -hmm. validation right so it's like you know i remember at the golden nationals we'd watch these dogs like these owners with their putting the dog's paws over their shoulders Mm -hmm. like they're like slow dancing with the a person mm-hmm. and and it was like they they might as well be dating that dog mm-hmm. and but they were getting their emotional needs met right from this pup but you know? that i mean that's that's a lot of it you know with the dogs and people like oh can i love them now can i love them now and i'm like make them earn it just make them earn it for 10 minutes hmm. you know because then i feel like they appreciate it a little bit more instead of you just fawning all over them because in their world you know you you pay attention to your dog and you're sitting there petting it and licking it in the mouth for 10 minutes and the dog's looking around like yeah the the dog ain't that into you yeah you know what i mean yeah it's not that into you so it's like giving the dog respect and respecting your Mm -hmm. yourself and your dog space and it's a totally different Mm -hmm. way of relating to um you know it's like having it's like having boundaries Mm -hmm. just like in any other relationship relationship. and i remember when i you know brought my golden in and i was walking with him and i was like you know look he's like he's getting in front of me you know he's doing all stuff and you were like keep walking in your line like you know you stay in your lane shelby and you know if he gets in front of you like keep walking and i remember being like I, I might step on his paw. I can't do that. <laughs> and and you were like, he's resilient. He's going to figure it out very quickly. So mm-hmm. you walk in your lane. And if he gets in the way, then, like, he's getting in the way. And I remember the reaction I had. It was like, if I let him, if I step on his foot, I'm bad. And it was like, okay, the parallel. You know, you were like, who else do you let walk on in your life? You know, who else is walking on you? And I remember being like, oh, shoot, I do this everywhere. Mm -hmm. I was doing it with my clients. I was doing it, you know, in different friendships and relationships I had in my life of, you know, friends canceling on me or, you know, like I was constantly rescheduling, always feeling like I was having to give that 85% into a relationship. And Mm -hmm. then maybe, you know, a friend would like give me the time of day after I'm going on her schedule, her time, her whatever. And so it's like, I was like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. I do this everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was shocking that I'm over there being like oh yeah this dog oh like he's just you know he's out of line and i don't know he just doesn't respect women but it was like no i was enabling this pattern with him and i didn't even understand i didn't recognize it and i mean the mind-blowing thing that i've learned from working with you and you know i i heard this one line i think from a tony robbins documentary and it was like we get what we tolerate Mm -hmm. and that understanding that has changed my life of recognizing if i'm allowing a certain behavior at some point 
I gave a green light. And if I feed into a certain pattern of relating, you know, if I am guilt tripped into something versus going, wait a second, that's yours. That's your whatever complex. I'm not embracing it. I'm not taking it on. That's not my, that's not, not my circus, not my monkeys. Right. And if I don't play into it, it doesn't become a thing because mm-hmm. I'm not tolerating it. And so with, I mean, when you're working with dogs, like what are some common things or, or like a practical thing of, yeah, why, why do we feel like we got to let our dogs, if my dog jumps on me and gets all hyped up, what am I making that mean? There you go. You're becoming a doormat. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we want our dogs to be excited to see us. We also want our significant others to be excited to see us, but we don't let them jump all over us and knock us down. And yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. They just they don't do it. Yeah. What what happens with the dogs is they start jumping and we're we're putting our hands on them, trying to either push them down and then it becomes like a reward. There's a lot of energy that comes with us at this particular time our voices our our body language the energy about us even though we want him to stop he's just misreading the energy yeah he's just like when you put your hands on him and you're going stop and you're so for him that in itself is a reward connection yeah Mm -hmm. so it's just like it's just like you in a bar stop yeah you know what i mean it it, the energy is totally different because yeah. I can touch you like this yeah. and mean one thing, yeah. or I can touch you in the same spot and never move my hand, and yeah. it means something totally yeah. different just that fast. Yeah. So if you can read my energy, and you don't think that dog can read my energy, mm. you've lost your mind. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about animals that can detect minute trace amounts of, you know, narcotics that can detect cancer that can tell somebody they're going to have a seizure before they ever even have a seizure yeah like incredible incredible energy readers and we come in you know i just think of um you know i've seen these parallels in my life where you know i go home to my household you know my childhood home and i'm in my family dynamic and we always had dogs that were vocal i mean it's like a train wreck every time Mm -hmm. you walk into the house like the dog gets so frantic and coming back after doing this work of recognizing these patterns and un- and respecting how intelligent dogs truly mm-hmm. are you know the moment that we used to walk into my childhood home we would be like hey what are you doing oh my gosh what's happening and the dog just woke up from a nap you know like the dog's probably been resting hanging out you know in his energy and her energy and then the people that they love come in and they're doing all these high-pitched things Mm -hmm. hands up you know oh my gosh Mm -hmm. we do and the dog is playing into the very energy that we you know jump into and so Mm -hmm. it's like if your dog is jumping on you consider what ways are you jumping on the dog first energetically what are the things that you're doing to hype them up and i remember when you and i we were going to the grocery store and there was a a, a dog like birdie you know a a gentle like english cocker spaniel Mm -hmm. very like calm demeanored and you were working with them and you know i was like hey oh my gosh i was doing that high pitch thing and you were like don't talk to her like that right now (laughs) you know because she that dog each breed you know that dog had a very sensitive nature Mm -hmm. and she's very submissive and that would get her too riled up Mm -hmm. you know she needed a calm presence and mm-hmm. to relax with her and it's so funny that it's like it's not about the dog it's mm-hmm. about me feeling mm-hmm. like i have to express how much i'm excited about this dog with making my voice really high pitched mm-hmm. oh my god ah! like all that yeah. and it's like that stresses the dog out on a certain level versus like you know, I, I asked you one time, well, why do, do you ever get hyped up about your dog and want to, like, get all high-pitched like that, too? And you were like, I believe that my dogs can sense my love and my affection to them in, you know, so, so many subtle ways. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to get all crazy. And, and I'm like... I'm like, oh shit. Like also <laughs> with her kids, with her husband, like you had, you know, I feel like I've learned so much around love and just 
respecting my myself and the people around me mm. through the way that you know where I've been like are you like do you like your dogs and you're like I love them and and I have no doubt that they can pick up on the affection that mm-hmm. I hold for them. But walk me through, like, for people that are like, wait, I don't know how to expe- express affection to my dog if I'm not, like, letting them lay all, jump on me, roll around, like. So, I mean, I'm not saying not to pet your dog and love your dog. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is, like, for me, I mean, my dogs work every day, you know, because that's what we do. Yeah. If, if I didn't train because there was a time in my life that I didn't my dog still worked if that meant heal and sit going on a walk um, staying on the on the dog bed on their place mm. when I when I told them to it was there was a job yeah I think people I think dogs feel it too every dog has a purpose I mean you know there's a book out and I mean that that or those words alone are so strong but they do have a purpose and it's just a matter of finding what that purpose is yeah so i'm not gonna let um i don't lost my train of thought yeah but the boundary thing of like i think of if you had a roommate Mm -hmm. that you never enforced any kind of structure you're like yeah man like eat my food do whatever but it's like how much better do we feel when Mm -hmm. we have a clear understanding of how do we fit into this family dynamic to this tribe Mm -hmm. dynamic or you know a household dynamic but i just you know i like sitting on the couch i'll call the dogs up you know i don't call them all up Mm -hmm. i'll just call one of them up to lay down beside me you know yeah and it's not that I don't love the other ones. Right. It's just that, well, I mean, it's your turn. Yeah. You know, and, and nobody gets mad and nobody cries and storms off. They all just lay right there. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's, but that is all of that rubbing. Cause I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, I can rub ears on a Labrador and I'm like drooling <laughs> and asleep, you know, yeah. like that. Yeah. But that's self gratification. Right. That it's dog not a, could care not, less. Yeah, it's not for the dog. It's mm-hmm. for you. It's for me. To feel comfort. Right. So I feel like a lot of times people mistake the self gratification for what they think is gratifying the dog. What's going to gratify the dog is taking it on a walk, teaching it obedience. Yeah. Because where I see dogs thrive is from being obedient, mm-hmm. from having somebody say, it's just like a kid in school. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, they they do much better with the structure mm-hmm. because if you let them loose, they become that chaotic energy. Yeah, because they're just seeking. They're just looking right. for how, you know, what to do now, what right. to do now. And just we like a feel dog. just like our minds mm-hmm. as well. How often do we get chaotic? I know if I don't have even structure in my day of, OK, what's the rest of my day or I can do anything. I mean, mm-hmm. some people do well with this, but for myself where, you know, I, I am a high energy person. I will it's like I'm spun out I need a little bit of all right okay what do I how do I want to feel today I need to create structure in Mm -hmm. deciding how to build out a day if I have Mm -hmm. a free weekend day or heaven forbid a free Saturday we're not filming or something so and it's the same for dogs and talk like I feel like what you said the 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 petting the dog's ears and you're like oh my gosh it's heaven to me but the dog is like that's nice you know cool dog's asleep doesn't care yeah how (laughs) how often i think we we uh, we just so project like so Mm -hmm. much of ourselves onto the dog Mm -hmm. and it's like is that really the dog's truth is the dog like desperate for like you know whatever it is or do we feed this system of you know like oh my dog's neurotic right like i've i've had conversations like this with Mm -hmm. you before oh my dog is neurotic he is jumping around or he's knocking stuff off the windows the moment we leave the house he's chaotic and you were like well shelby maybe you're chaotic what's your energy like and i was in a very chaotic space in my life where i felt that anxiety mm-hmm. in my own world of a little bit of abandonment happening and you know freaking out around big picture stuff and it's like if you got dogs that can sniff out explosives and cancer and all these crazy things why would that dog not pick up on a very real presence of anxiety and feeling very uncertain mm-hmm. 
I'm not saying that they could diagnose it as that. Sure. But they know that something ain't right. Yeah. Well, think of when you work at a job and your boss is wiling out, stressed about maybe something's happening financially or in another division. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe when they talk to you face to face, you know, they're like, hey, thanks so much. Everything's great. Thanks. And you can just sense like and you get nervous Mm -hmm. because you're like, what's going to happen? I don't know. You pick up on Mm -hmm. the energy. Yeah. And, you know, what do you think with dogs of... If, if someone has a dog where they want to work, you know, just have a nice family dog that's, you know, yeah, you know, great with their kids, but they're not taking them out to go and retrieve ducks or do whatever. What what are other practical ways, too, of getting to work on that bond? of Because I think working with a dog is amazing. Mm-hmm. So what can that look like for someone that's living in the city? Obedience. Because you can do that anywhere. I mean, I look out here right now, and I, all I can see is, like, just the coolest agility course. Yeah. You know, you've got these yeah. steps. You've got these, you know, yeah. elevated street, whatever they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, there's so many things that you could do. Yeah. So, I would find something, and every dog is going to be different. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not all going to be the same. But I would figure out what his, strong, what his strengths are, and then I would be like, all right, let's develop that. Yeah. You know? With you, I can, I don't know if I would consider you a client, but you're definitely a friend and you've Mm. been around me enough. Yeah. But what I have seen with you in the last, I don't know, six years? Yeah, it's been like six or seven years. Yeah. Like, I just, I feel like you are so much more together now than you were seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And did the dog training help? I don't know, probably. I think it did. But, you uh-huh. know, our rate for training dogs is a lot different than the counseling rate, which yeah. is 350 an hour. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the, the coming yeah. in for Shannon's right, shrink right. That is the shrink session. Yes. Um, I don't know. I just see that you have just, like, molded yourself and matured business-wise, relationship-wise. Um, of course, I don't feel like I was ever one of those friends that would call you up and then be like, postpone it. No, I'm pretty all right, let's do it. Yeah. Get in the car, let's go to Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> let's go yeah. wherever. Yeah. Look, there's a cornfield. Let's take your picture. Okay. Get in there, Shelby. <laughs> Drink some orange juice while you're at it. That's the way we like to leave voicemails. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's what we should just podcast or the voicemail. Just, just do the yeah. remember when I made you the yoga for rednecks? Oh my god. The redneck yoga. You should all right. definitely go. Uh, okay, so so Shannon lives like in the woods. That's all. That's the best. Yeah. She lives in the country. And so I was trying to get you into having more movement because you're on your feet like 14 hours a day. I mean, just insane amounts. You literally get up, go out, feed the dogs, start working with dogs, start working with clients. I mean, yeah, your world. I don't know how you do it. So I was like, Shannon, you got to do more yoga. And I was like freshly <laughs> yoga certified, all this stuff. So I taught I. I created a custom DVD. It wasn't a DVD. It was a YouTube link. It was a video link nope. recording for you of essentially sun salutations A and B. And it was like 25 minutes. But I did the whole thing with the worst southern accent I could possibly try to pull off. <laughs> and I was doing examples of, you know, if your man is at home <laughs> and you're not worried about it, just that's the state of mind you need to be in. Don't think about <laughs> Sheila at the barbershop, you need to be here and now. Breathe when they breathe in. Can you link this to the podcast? Oh, I'm not putting that up there. That's terrible. I wore, and I wore camo leggings. I wore my camo It's got to be linked. Hunting leggings. And then no. they can get their dogs and do some yoga. Nope. Maybe I'll pull a snippet. That's all you're getting. That's all you're getting. I watched that, and it's just like my face instantly gets beet red. But that was my ridiculous, ludicrous attempt at getting you to do some damn yeah. stretch. Shannon. I mean, you know, but that I, I've been stretching. <laughs> I've been working. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, the the journey that you've been on. So, how do you balance like you've had a journey in your business where you know, I mean, you got you have an interesting business model because it's like you're not just giving people a product or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like people revere their pets Mm -hmm. their dogs those Mm -hmm. that's a family member and you're you know i know that for a while there's such a challenge of you know people you know the 
the kennels are on your property. Mm -hmm. So people were rolling up like while you're having dinner and Mm -hmm. like all these times. And it was like, how do you turn work off? And I know Mm -hmm. so many people listening can relate with that because, you know, being an entrepreneur or being, you know, having a business, whatever the model is, we have that that struggle of like turning it off mentally. But you like physically have people like knock on the door. You used to. What was your how did you maneuver? Well, I mean, it's hard. You can't turn off a living, breathing anything you yeah. can't turn it off yeah and you know when they're in my care i'm always worried about them making sure that yeah you know if they're off then i need to be the one to catch it mm-hmm. if something isn't right mm-hmm. if it's just an upset stomach if it's an ear you know they got too much water in their ear you know yeah. i need to be able to catch every little thing right so for us to have a whole lot of downtime really in an option mm-hmm. you know it's seven days a week it's 24 7 yeah you know, there's it, we don't get a day off. We we used to be open for anybody seven days a week, and then I cut that out. You know, a couple of years ago because mm-hmm. I was like, I got to have a day. Yeah, yeah. So we took Sunday, and I put a do not air sign up in the driveway going towards the house. Yeah. Because you know I'll have my dogs up or out and just be out messing with them and. I mean, they don't have any street smarts because we we live in the middle of nowhere, yeah. so yeah. they don't know what cars are. Yeah. Um, but most people are very respectful of of coming up to the house. You know, we we do live out there, mm-hmm. so it is our home and it is our business, which can be hard to separate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know how you do it. You're just like you're a hardworking human with a lot of grit. <laughs> Some shrimp and grits. No, um, that sounds good. I know. Now that I'm in chat. All right, so what about uh, – because we have, like, when I think of my relationship with you over the years, um, I consider you my special friend. Because um, <laughs> we, we, like – I, I don't know. I feel like you're you you probably form really interesting relationships with people naturally because you're working with their dogs and you're mm-hmm. like you know you're and you're like you're also calling people on their shit. I imagine like constantly if people because like you know this statement I learned from you of you know working with a dog. It's like you know maybe. 25% of it's the dog mm-hmm. and 75% of it is when the the owner or the family mm-hmm. gets their dog back right. and teaching the owner how to relate with their their new their family member their pup on a different level in a different way yep. and it's really hard to break those habits you know everybody not everybody but people want to put the cart before the horse I mean sorry but you did yeah you completely know, and you can't do that yeah you cannot walk before you crawl, mm-hmm. nor can you run before you walk. Mm-hmm. You know, just take it one step at a time. Yeah. You know, training, I don't feel like, or I'd rather classify myself as a teacher than a trainer. Yeah. Because I feel like if, I don't put, I don't put time on it. I don't say, okay, well, we're only going to work on this for five minutes. And if you can't get it on five minutes, then you're going to be failed out. Yeah. Or we're going to move on to something else. We're going to move on. No. Yeah. No, we're going to do it until you get it. Because dog, dogs learn from repetition mm-hmm. and, and being consistent in what you're asking them. If you ask them to sit on Monday, and they do, and then on Tuesday they don't, and you just kind of go, well, he just didn't want to sit today. Well, guess what you're going to get on Wednesday and Thursday? Yeah. And, and Friday. Friday, yeah. It's kind of like you telling your kid to do your homework. Do your homework. Don't make me tell you again, because if I tell you again, now there's going to be a consequence. Friday night, you wanted to do what? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Because I'm not... The more I tell you, I feel like if I keep telling a dog over and over and over to sit, mm-hmm. sit, 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 instead of just reaching down and pushing the hind end down, not aggressively, just push them yeah. down... To sit, yeah. If I keep on telling them, I feel like I'm dumbing them down. So now they don't have to think. You and know? and what about being like, oh, she normally says this to me about 15 times before there's any mm-hmm. real consequence. So right. I know she told me to sit, but like she didn't really mean it. It's kind of like it goes back to cleaning your room. 
you know your mother says clean your room 45 times and you don't do it because you're like she doesn't really mean it yeah. i'll do it later then your dad comes home <laughs> and the first thing he says is did you clean your room and it's like you almost break your leg running up a step yeah you can't get there fast enough. yeah i just heard a comic talking about that same thing <laughs> yeah. you know your mom's but, like come on now do it do it whatever mm-hmm. and then the dad comes home like did you listen to your mother and then you're like, oh, God, I'm, yeah. I'm done. I'm, I'm, right. I'm going to go do it. Because you know with him yeah. something, there's going to be a consequence. Yeah. In one way, shape, or form, whatever it is, take something away, you know, smack you on the bottom. I don't mm-hmm. know. There's going to mm-hmm. be a consequence. Yeah. But if, if, if we let our dogs go through life without any consequence, mm-hmm. guess who's calling the shots? It ain't you. The dog. <laughs> Hello. The dog. <laughs> I know. And it's like. Yeah. I I just can't, you know, it's one of those things I feel like once you start understanding the dynamics at play of the way we enable certain behavior because we are looking for self-gratification. Mm-hmm. It's not about the dog. It's I want to feel loved with right. my dog losing his shit the moment I open the door to my house mm-hmm. because maybe the rest of my life sucks. <laughs> maybe my boyfriend does, doesn't text me back and god damn it i want my dog to give me the love my boyfriend is neglecting right. and i yeah. you know and Girl, you need a new boyfriend <laughs> you don't need that same one you need to get on that <laughs> that tinder they're doing no yeah you know farmersonly.com oh yeah that's right sorry we're, we're con- this is the country <laughs> episode of yeah no but it's it is so true and um you know i've seen it in my own life and you know, it's amazing. Like I think of, all right, feeding dogs people food. Mm-hmm. That's another great thing of, oh, well, you know, the dog, he wants this. And it's like, I didn't realize that dogs didn't really give a shit about people food until someone introduces it. And that that is a totally learned mm-hmm. behavior somewhere. And, you know, to, when I was around those, you know, hunting dogs in that previous relationship, you know, for the longest time, you know, Hank, he doesn't even know what people food was. Mm-mm. You know, he just, it, it's like that was none of his business. That was not mm-hmm. part of his routine. He doesn't affiliate when we sit down to the table. Oh, better scoot in under the table. I need whatever's on that. Whatever they're doing up there, it's, I need it. And so just to learn and like, God bless my parents, but like, I watch like, you know, they feed the animals we've had. We've always had fat animals. And it ends up hurting them in later on yes. in life where, you know, like hip dysplasia yeah. and because they, they're carrying more, much more weight than they would have in, in, you know, the wild or in their natural balance. And it's like, did they need that cereal milk? Totally calling you out, Dad. I love you. And <laughs> do they need that milk and the extra cream and your like turkey lunch meat? Do they need all those things? Yeah. Like, but it's like, but it makes him feel good. Right. And I used gratification. to, yeah. And I used to come home and want to brawl with my family. I'm like, you're not doing it right. You know, I love God. That's been my whole life. I'm like, I just learned this new thing called raw foodism. You guys need to throw everything that's cooked the fuck out of here. And that, <laughs> uh, my parents are amazing because they've had to put up with me for however many years. But you know, it's been a journey for me to recognize. All right, you know what? Like, choose my battles, and also. Those are my parents' pets. Mm -hmm. That's none of my fucking business. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to come in and swoop in, you know, and and I'm just thinking about this for people listening where they're like, well, I'm really working hard to work with my dog to be, you know, um, have his role in our family. And then if my mother-in-law, whoever comes into town Mm -hmm. and starts feeding scraps on the table, what do I do? But it's like, it's her cottage. (laughs) Yeah, go get her the mother-in-law suite. Airbnb. Yeah. Yeah, And but it's like, you know, for me, the difference was to recognize I got to choose my battles with my family. And if they want to do that, if it truly gives them joy and purpose, really, for my parents, I'm not in their home. They are empty nesters. And you know what? If they need something to coddle, that's their decision. It's none of my freaking business. And... You know, I got to let go of that because mm-hmm. if you're trying to teach someone something they don't want to learn, they don't want to. If they don't think it's broke, then there's no need to fix it. Yeah. And and being okay with, you know yeah. what, I, like I could get into, I don't think that that's right of 
putting that extra weight and the strain on that dog's body that's not appropriate whatever but it's like I don't got a dog in that fight no fucking pun intended no, no it's like, save your energy yeah you know save yeah. your breath for when something will really matter yeah because you know it, it it doesn't matter yeah doesn't matter what you say and you can say it to you blue in the face and the only person that's getting a rise out of it is you yeah and the only person that's getting their panties in a twist is you as well. Mm-hmm. So if you want a wedgie, mm-hmm. and if you want to get hot-blooded and mm-hmm. get all worked up over nothing, start trying to reprimand other people on how mm-hmm. they like to work with their dogs. That's one thing I learned a long time ago was just keep your mouth shut about a man's dog. You know? Just don't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Unless you ask me, Yeah. I will never say a word. Yeah. I won't do it. Yeah. Because I'm like, kind of like you said, that's just... It's not my fight. Yeah, it's it's so much more about respecting the dog and their behaviors and their seeing them for who they are mm-hmm. and being of service to their identity rather than forcing them into something. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like taking a you know a chihuahua and saying that you're going to make a retriever out of it. <laughs> I'm like, come yeah. on, people. You know, be but why real. couldn't a dog like what? Help me understand the difference in breeds and, you know, for people, because it's like, well, why couldn't a Chihuahua be a retriever? I'm not saying they couldn't. Yeah. But it's it's a lot of work. You know, it's going to be a lot of work because that's not, there's no instinct there. Mm. You know? So you got to, like for me, like not every dog is going to be cut out to be a hunting dog. Mm-hmm. It just it doesn't happen. I mean, Even if they're are, a lab, right? Some are going to fail out. Yeah, you know. But I'm like, as as a teacher, I feel like it is my job to figure out what it is that that dog can do well. And then let's say, all right, let's. This is where we need to go, because I feel like any dog can be obedient. Any mm-hmm. dog can be obedient. My level of obedience and my expectations are probably higher than just the average the average person yeah but i do put very high expectations on my dog but i also put the time in that i should yeah so you know do i start from the day they come home just drilling and teaching it no 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 i mean a puppy's only a puppy once yeah but they do have to have manners they do have to say yes ma'am no ma'am please and thank you Mm -hmm. you know i mean that's just a rule What's a practical example of a puppy starting to learn, um, yeah, like having a role? So, I mean, most puppies' treat training is, oh, my God, like the easiest way to go. But I just get really tiny treats, soft treats. I don't get crunchy treats because I feel like by the time they get done crunching it, they forgot what they were doing anyway. (laughs) Yeah. You know, they got like ADD. (laughs) Yeah. They're puppies. Yes, they are puppies. So all of my training sessions are short and sweet. Like, I'll just take the bowl and I'll hold it above their head and I'll say, sit. And then I just wait for them to sit. And then I'll put the food down. You know, so it's just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't throw it all on them at once. I mean, formal training, I don't really start until probably eight or nine months old. Okay. And some people start earlier. I mean, I feel like they retain more when they're older. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're more ready to learn. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, how much can you really teach a room full of kindergartners every day? Yeah. You know? I mean, how much? And that's why we have nap time. And that's why we have play time. Because you can't just drill them like that. Yeah. You just can't do it. Yeah. They're babies. Yeah. And you have to support their capacity. Because, okay, when you do the sit with the, the food and that, how old are they at that point to introduce something as simple as that? So if I have a litter, I start then. Okay. So when they're, you know, seven weeks old, eight yeah. weeks old, I walk in with a food bowl and they just all sit. It's awesome to watch, by the way. And then I just, because they, you know, I don't want them jumping on me. Right. I don't want them knocking me down. They just have to be patient. And then I'll stand there. Sometimes I might count to three. I might count to ten. You know, I'm not one, one, that. I'm just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, and then I'll put it down. Mm-hmm. But I feel like at that point, they're learning to say please. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like they're learning boundaries and they're learning that there are certain things that we have to do to get things. 
Mm. So they're working for it and don't even know they're working for it. You know, like with a puppy, it's just play. It is play, but there's structure to that play. Mm -hmm. It's like teaching a kid how to play soccer. You don't just cut them loose on a field with a soccer ball and say, kick it. Yeah. You're learning. No, you're not. Yeah. You know, you're learning how to kick the ball. Mm. But if you're going to learn how to play the game, there's a little bit more structure to it. Mm -hmm. Now we have other teammates and and coaches and we actually have nets on each end we have soccer goals we've got lines on the you know so yeah it just you just change the dynamics and the older they get with that game the better they get you know you don't have to tell them to go kick it in the other end mm-hmm. because they know where they're going yeah so yeah it's getting that support mm-hmm. but now they're just puppies and if they start jumping on you and they're you know three months four months five months they're cute and they're only like 20 pounds why does it matter if they're jumping on you (laughs) because they're going to get a lot bigger nails get a lot bigger a lot sharper so i just i don't allow it from jump street i just don't want it to i just don't want anybody jumping on me i don't want alan jumping on me (laughs) you know what i mean alan's like 220 pounds he's a very large man yes i mean don't jump on me Mm mm-hmm just don't yeah well and it's like that was something that blew my mind of you know and even i that was a trigger for me when when i don't even know whose dog or what the scenario was i think it was you know a zealous dog was jumping and you were around and you were like you know just put your knee like a little bit forward so if they jump your kneecap is going to be like the first thing there as they're jumping into you and that's not going to feel good and they're just mainly step forward into them yeah you know because it's like it it, it, we'll go back to the bar if you're in that bar and a guy is just like coming on you and coming in your space if you just step into him and say back up Mm -hmm. he's gone Mm -hmm. but if you kind of cower into the bar yeah off camera yeah do you know what i mean he's going to keep invading your space because when you step into him you mean it get away yeah back up madeline are you taking notes on this over there but when you back up into that corner it's just an open invitation yeah yeah and you're becoming submissive your body language is like go ahead keep like towering and they will and then they'll come in in droves it's like they smell you out and they're like there she is right yeah but so with a dog as simple as stepping in you know and making that it's Mm -hmm. like oh wait like this i can't this isn't an appropriate this what's that communicating to the dog but you think about it if if i walk into you if i meet you on the street and i walk into you and i'm coming at you with a certain energy Mm mm-hmm are you going to be like, oh, um, I'm not moving. You're going to be like, awkward. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to go around because I'm projecting such an energy on yeah. you that makes you uncomfortable. So what about if, you know, because I wonder about this, if if someone's got a dog that they think it's really cute when they're jumping and attacking you with high energy and you come into their home and let's say it's right before a wedding and you may or may not have a very nice dress on mm-hmm. or outfit on and that pup's been outside and you do not want it to jump on you, like those are the real life circumstances mm-hmm. where like, oh, it's so cute. And then, you know, then we like, you know, open a yeah. can of whoop ass or something on our dog because the one time you're going out for a date, your dog gets mud mm-hmm. on you, right? then it matters and the Mm -hmm. dog doesn't know any different because all the other times you think it's okay and you say yeah jump on me i love it that goes back to you can't correct on monday and then not tuesday and wednesday or date night saturday right yeah if you don't like it don't allow it so with the the jumping and going into someone else's home Mm -hmm. what if you know if you are like because i i still i'm like all right I don't I don't accept I don't tolerate dogs jumping on me or you know doing all the stuff and yet what about when you walk into somebody else's home and they've got that high energy dog and they think it's cute Mm -hmm. and you don't how do you handle that well I don't really acknowledge the dog yeah you know and I just I'll go in with such a forceful energy that I mean they don't even the people don't even want to hug me you know what I mean (laughs) But what if you want to hug the people and then you just don't want to be harassed by the dog? You're saying to not have that energy. So I guess because I've been doing it for so long, like for me, if I would walk in your house yeah. and Chris, you know, was jumping all over me, yeah. I would be like, I would just sit here and I would kind of stare you down. Yeah. And then once he's, you know, would behave himself. It's really intimidating. Uh-huh. I would. <laughs> 
I would be like, well, Shelby, it's so good to see you. And then I would proceed, you know, but like mind tricks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like Mm -hmm. for me, there's a certain amount of self-control that you have to have. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even I never even looked at him. Yeah. But he could feel it anyway mm-hmm. i love that we're using chris yeah. as the illustration <laughs> but like so a dog if he's because the dog's gonna look for mm-hmm. the moment he gets that that green light to jump mm-hmm. and to engage mm-hmm. and so if you're like physically positioning your body of like you know i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not really interested in engaging with you watch I'm, watch two dogs at the dog park and they're like you you'll hear somebody oh he really just wants to play with her and i'm like I can tell you right now, that old bitch right there is fixing to eat his face off because she does not want to play with him. You just watch because she's ducking. She's yeah. moving. Yeah. She's looking away. And he's like trying to lick her in the ear and lick yeah. her. And she's like, and I was like, man, she is warning him. It's going to be a time bomb. Yeah, she is yeah, fixing yeah. to bite him. And then the next thing you know, pop, 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 pop. Yeah. And then I'm like, like, back off. I don't think she want to play with him. Yeah. And I'm like, but she's telling him. Right. Well, the next time he goes up, to her to play mm-hmm. and she looks at him he's going to back away mm-hmm. he's just going to go away because he's going to remember like, right before she made eye right. contact right after that he got snapped at a dog will never give any more correction on another dog than is needed wow wow i mean yeah there's a lot of truth i, I mean see. that's what we can learn so much from dogs mm-hmm because you're mm-hmm. you're saying it's like all right round one pup you know young dog zealous whatever fucking mm-hmm. with this other dog and she's like don't don't fuck with me i'm not into it i'm not mm-hmm. into it. i'm not fucking into it thank you like, thank you all right mm-hmm. so anyways but then if he comes around again uh-huh. do you think that that dog is that and bitch is a female dog this is a common term in the yes yes dog world really yeah so so if dog. that bitch is like i just like it him say bitch <laughs> so if that bitch i can't not say it in a normal accent no so if she if what happens if that dog the young let's say i'm just visualizing a younger dog comes back didn't get the hint the first time what is she gonna do well she's gonna dogs have a conversation she's gonna she's gonna look at him and mm-hmm. that's part one and then if he keeps on and on and on, then it goes to, yeah, the you know, teeth. like a little snarl. And then she comes in with a bite. Is she going to bite him in the nose? Um, probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is she going to kill him? No. Yeah. yeah. You know, now some dogs that have extreme amounts of aggression, well, you, I mean, they, they just, don't, they shouldn't be there. Right. Yeah. And in a know. social situation. And, because they don't have the balance of the right. socialization of all right phase one of being like fuck off is mm-hmm. like hey a little bit of like hey fuck off and then the other one is going to be right. like the next level is like hey you know shove me like mm-hmm. don't know right and then the next one's going to be like bam uppercut and then the next one's going to be like daggers <laughs> no, I don't. oh my god get more but real fast no. knuckles yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know so but there i love that we don't like i don't I've never recognized to look for that in dogs mm-hmm. until being around your world mm-hmm. of observing. These are not just dumb little animals that are just like like living stuffed animals. Right. They are. They have a hierarchy and there's structure there. You know, dogs don't just jump on another dog out of the clear blue, even though people will think that that's what happened. Yeah. There's a conversation that's been had yeah. between oh, those two yeah. dogs yeah. long before that ever escalated into that. Mm-hmm. You just misread the signs. Mm-hmm. You well, know, and it's just, that's what, you know, one of the things about dogs is I feel like you just become so much more keen on your surroundings and the body language of people and just everything like I, I can't even put it all into words well and it also helps you have like a criminal background uh criminal justice background of knowing all of this like <laughs> yep. really jacked up statistics mm-hmm. and facts about what to look for mm-hmm. oh my god <laughs> it's never a dull moment with you yeah, no, um it's not That'd well be boring <laughs> i really want to talk with you about all these things all day but we have to pivot and bring things down to a close shannon how can people get in touch with you follow along if they have a problematic dog or if they have a a, a great dog that they want to be an awesome member of their family or if they're like well shit actually (laughs) all the dogs i've ever had i don't ever i've never had consistent results with them and maybe they want to fine-tune their own dog you know 
dog teaching game and work on themselves or have a shrink session with you and figure out what kind of shit they're enabling <laughs> in their life how can people get in touch with you um it's pretty easy palmetto gun dogs okay p-a-l-m-e-t-t-o g-u-n-d-o-g-s we're on facebook um somebody heisted our website and uh, super sucks yeah it really does uh-huh. okay so facebook palmetto gun dogs instagram um at palmetto gun dogs one word any any spaces no okay so All at palmetto gun dogs we're pretty easy there's a lot of cute dogs on there highly recommend following that one it is a lot of cute dogs okay all right yep. well shannon this has been amazing and thank you for the the many kicks in the pants that you've given me in my own <laughs> life and uh this has been amazing and for our viewers and our listeners thank you so much for tuning in if this was interesting if you have more questions if you're like wait like i do these things in my life and you have if you have any other questions comments concerns you want to fling past shannon uh leave them in the comments with this episode and be sure to like subscribe uh, if you want more dog training videos or uh human training videos after this uh let us know and i hope that you have an amazing day filled with passion and i hope that you make some stories worth telling bye bye Mom will give you a hug. <laughs>